everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am going to be sharing a ton of examples of the bio paragraph for your query letter. I got a ton of queries about the bio for your query. There's a misconception that if you don't have a ton of writing credits and a super impressive bio that you have no shot in the query trenches, and that's just not true. Queries are really all about your book. Yes, the agent does want to know something about you, but your bio is gravy on top of a great book pitch. Your bio can be short and simple, just a little bit about who you are, maybe a little bit of color to give context to why you wrote this book, or if you do have writing credits or credentials, of course you would include them. I collected a ton of different examples that I am going to read to you and put on the screen, and they fall in into four major categories, or I put them into four major categories. I have bios that are simple, sweet, and to the point. I have those that I call kind of book adjacent or have personal color in them that relate to the project that they're querying. I have bios that work in pitch contest information, so you can see examples of that. And lastly, I have what I call attainable credit bios. These are authors who had things in their bios that are all things that you too can do, work toward, join, etc. to get writing related things into your bio. You should never sell yourself short that you have nothing to say in your bio. That's usually not true, and I hope that these examples will give you a lot of different ideas of how you can approach your query bio. I'm going to start with the simple, basic, straightforward bios. The first one is my friend Heather Kaczynski. Her agent is Kristen Nelson, and her debut was Dare Mighty Things, and this is the short and sweet bio that she used. I work in a library on Redstone Arsenal, home of Marshall Space Flight Center, and birthplace of the technology that took men to the moon. This could also go under the book adjacent color that we're going to do, but I put it under short and simple because that is really straightforward. It's just a good example where you just say where you work, maybe it's tied to the book, and you don't need to say anything else. Next is Erica Cruz writing under the pen name L. Cruz. Her agent is Naomi Davis, and this is the bio she used in her query for her adult romance. I hold a degree in English from UC Irvine. When I'm not writing, I work as a nurse practitioner for the elderly. That's a great example of the when I'm not writing bio query line. I've used that one in my author bio. It's a great way to be like, well, I'm a writer, but I also do this. Next is Mary Kate Pagano, and her agent is Karen Wiseman. When I'm not working as a social media director or pondering the angst of the fictional people in my stories, I can be found reading up a storm, baking galettes while listening to French music, and spending time with my own friends and family, whom I could never leave behind for anything. This is my first novel. I pronounced angst the way y'all want me to on purpose. You're welcome. Uh, no idea if I pronounced galettes right, but that one has a bit of her job, a little bit of personal color for her hobbies, and the line about whom I could never leave behind for anything, that I believe is a reference to the book that she was querying. You don't actually have to say this is my first novel, but it is something you can throw onto the end of a bio if you're kind of hurting for things to say. Usually it's assumed that it's your first novel in the sense that it's your debut novel, not the first one you've ever written. Next is Jessica Lewis, and her agent is Holly Root. Her debut is Bad Witch Burning. I'm an author in Alabama, and so far no revenants are stalking me. I have a BA in English Literature with a minor in Creative Writing. I was an editorial intern with company name for a year. Now, of course, this one has some credits in it, but it's still a really good example of short and sweet. First of all, she calls herself an author. Thumbs up to that. We're all authors where she lives. The Revenant stalking her, that's a cute little reference to the book that she's querying. She mentions her degrees and that she has a little bit of publishing adjacent experience. Short and sweet. Next is Ebony Lynn Mudd. This is a picture book author and her agent is Lori Steele. I'm a member of SCBWI. During these uncertain times, I've been hosting stay-at-home story times and kid-friendly discussions that focus on inclusion, kindness, and diversity. 
This is from a recent query. It's a great way to kind of reference what's going on and kind of hobbies and things she's doing. And she's a children's book author, a picture book author. So it's that relevant little detail about stay at home story times. Also pay attention to SCBWI. We're going to talk about that in the attainable credential section. As I mentioned, a ton of these bios could go in multiple sections. That's one we're going to talk about. Next is Alyssa R. Sloan, and her agent is Kelly Van Sant, and her debut is The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes. Alyssa R. Sloan is a Texas native Japanese American with a penchant for reading books and celebrity gossip. She lives in Austin along with her husband and two cats in a house with a rolling library ladder. I like this example because there's nothing about degrees, there's nothing about her job or work experience. It's just a little bit about her, but also has a touch of humor to it, which I really like. And I also really want a rolling library ladder. Next is Emily Lloyd Jones. Her agent is Sarah Landis, and she's published a bunch of YA. Her most recent one is The Bone Houses. I have a bachelor's in English writing from Western Oregon University and recently completed my master's in publishing from Rosemont College. When I'm not writing, I enjoy adding books to my never ending to read list and playing with my temperamental cat. That's her original bio. I did ask her for her original bio before she had published a bunch of books. And obviously she has the educational credits, but I love that second sentence that it's just kind of, I love to read and cats. We love cats in a query. You see, you can say things that just kind of add a little bit and give them a sense of who you are. It doesn't have to be anything crazy or overboard. Next is Sophie Gonzalez. Her agent is Molly Kerhan. Her most recent book is Only Mostly Devastated and her next one is Perfect on Paper. I live in Adelaide, Australia and have recently completed my honors thesis in forensic psychology. Thank you for your consideration. That's it. That is truly short and sweet. Next is Emma Terrio. Her agent is Susie Townsend and her debut is Rebel Rose. My various publishing credits include various reviews for Foment, the literary journal of the Ottawa International Writers Festival, and a letter to the editor of the Ottawa Citizen in defense of Harry Potter when I was 11. I like this because it's kind of tongue in cheek. So this actually could go under that attainable writing credit section we're going to get to. She wrote some reviews for a literary journal and she said that, but I like that she finished it off with essentially a little joke that she wrote a letter to the editor about Harry Potter when she was a kid and it was published. And that's a publishing credential. It's kind of fun and tongue in cheek. Next is Nas Kutub and his agent is Natalie Lacasil. I'm half Indian, half Malay immigrant from Singapore, and this novel was inspired by my personal experiences growing up as a queer Muslim and as someone raised on a calorie dense diet of Eastern lore. Again, this could totally go into the next section as well, but I like that it's short and sweet. It's just a little bit about him, not education credentials or his job, but kind of what inspired him to write the story and a bit of who he is. Next is Jenna Voris and her agent is Claire Friedman. I have a journalism degree from Butler University and I'm currently pursuing my communications master in Washington, DC. Literally short and sweet. And last but certainly not least in this section is Brittany Lewis and her agent is Caitlin Detweiler. I am a KC native and I graduated with a degree in corporate communications and an emphasis in business and art. I currently work in communications for a university in Canvas and I am a strong supporter of the We Need Diverse Books slash writers movement. When I'm not daydreaming about new stories, you can find me binge watching YouTube or practicing West Coast Swing. I love that last sentence, kind of like the like little hint of personality and hobbies and interests in it. And generally, I think that's always a safe way to go when you're struggling on your bio. Write a slightly cute sentence that just gives them a taste of some things that you're into. The next category, which again, these are kind of nebulous, but I call this book adjacent or personal color. It's bios that lead with jokes or references to the book itself to give an agent a sense of why they wrote the book. The first one is LL Madrid and their agent is Rhea Lyons. I live in the desert with my family and other feral creatures. While I don't believe in ghosts, I saw one a decade ago and it's haunted my poor skeptical brain ever since. That's a direct tie into the book that they were querying and is a great way to write a very straightforward but fun little bio. Next is Leah Ryerson. Her agent is Chelsea Hensley and she sent me her query from a previous project because it had a really good short sweet book adjacent line in it. 
I live in Brooklyn and write for an online media company by day. My father is a mortuary technician by trade. So that last line is a direct tie-in to why they wrote a book that featured mortuaries. Next is Katie Kingman, whose agent is Rachel Brooks. Their debut is Down With The Ship. As for me, I have a bachelor's degree in English literature and a master's in education. I have been employed as a high school English teacher for the last eight years, and on occasion, my students are as competitive as Cole and her classmates. I've written for Baton Rouge Parents Magazine and the website Alpha Airlock. I put this one in that section because of the, the students are as competitive as Cole and her classmates. It's tying something from her specific book into her day job and experiences. Next is Kat Bakewell, whose agent is Jordan Hammersley, and her debut is We Are The Song. Clara's battle with her emotions and her magic was inspired by my own struggles with anxiety and depression. My nonfiction work has been published in Spanish in Columbia University's Portales in 2017 and 2018, and my short story, My Own Soul, was published in High Point University's literary journal Innovation in 2016. I spent 2018 as an English teacher in Orleans, France, where I worked on this novel and made sure to try every pastry at my local bakery. I recommend the chocolate religious. I really cannot speak French. <laughs> This one's obviously a little bit longer. It's got some writing credentials in it, but I like how it opens on specifically why she wrote about the content that was in the book that she was querying, and I love closing on a nice joke. I feel like it's always safe to mention French pastries. Next is JJ Clapton, whose agent is Megan Manzano. I'm a queer, disabled writer of SFF who loves to write stories where people like me get to have adventures and be the heroes. In my own adventure, I've recently moved from East London to live in Lanzarote. This is another great way to frame an own voices narrative, to explain why you've written a story without necessarily being I am own voices. This is what kind of you can do and what agents are looking for in terms of like, why did you write this story? I love a bio like this. So next are just a few examples that I call pitch contest tie-ins. Many people do pitch contests now, like Pit Mad or DV Pit, Pitch Wars, etc. And so I do have a few examples where authors specifically mentioned things from pitch contests in their query bio. I don't use these to overwhelm you. Of course, if you haven't participated in a pitch contest and had interest from editors, you're not going to be able to put something like this in your bio. But I wanted to have these examples because for some people, this could be really, really useful. So the first one is JL, whose agent is Natalie Lacassell, and her debut is Wings of Ebony. I have a bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of Texas, Austin, and have worked as a creative writing teacher. For full transparency, I participated in DV Pit, and she included a link to the pitch. And a handful of editors, 20 or so, have reached out to see pages once I've acquired representation. Thanks again for reading. Next is Lyndall Clipstone. Her agent is Jill Grinberg. Her debut is Lake's Edge. I grew up running wild in my own secret garden in the Barossa Ranges in South Australia. I have a beat arts ons and creative writing from the University of Adelaide and spent many years as a youth librarian fostering my love of stories. At the Lake's Edge was chosen for R4 of Author Mentor Match where I worked with an experienced mentor in revisions. Editors from HarperCollins Children's, Flux, Razorbill, Athenaeum, Page Street Kids, Wednesday, and St. Martin's Press expressed interest in my work in September 2018, Pit Mad. And lastly, Carolyn Tara O'Neill, her agent is Andrea Zumberg, and her debut is Daughters of a Dead Empire. I was inspired to write this story in part through my full-time work teaching NYC teenagers how to become politically engaged and seeing firsthand the power and compassion of young people fighting for change. In November 2017, this manuscript won entry into the Author Mentor Match program through recent Pitman and DV Pit competitions, name at X Publisher, name at Y, and name at Z, have all expressed interest in receiving this manuscript on submission. So those are just three different ways that you might mention something like Pitch Wars, Author Mentor Match, and then having editor interest from Pitmad or DV Pit or similar. 
So last but certainly not least is what I call the attainable credentials section. And again, some of the previous bios had some of these, but the reason I want to highlight these, I got these sample bios from friends of mine. I also put out a call on Twitter and got some really good ones. And the thing that you're gonna notice over and over in a lot of bios, and I think this is why they feel overwhelming, this came up in my query samples video, is a ton of these people, it seems like that they just have all of these writing credentials and you don't have these writing credentials. All of the samples I'm about to give you include things that you can go out and do. They're organizations you can join, they're communities you can become involved in, volunteer work, critique groups, etc. And these are ways to mention those things in your bio query just to get across you are a serious aspiring writer and you have engaged in some way, shape, or form with the professional writing community. That's what these attainable credits mean. And some of them are mentoring contests that you can enter. So if you get in, you would include those. So I share these to point out, you don't have to be fancy and have a fancy bio, but you can also, over a period of years, as you are drafting and writing and aspiring, get involved and essentially create credentials for your bio. So the first one is JC Peterson, whose agent is Amy Bishop, and her debut is being Mary Bennett. I'm a former journalist and editor who now spends my days chasing after two young boys. I was chosen as a 2019 Pitch Wars mentee and have participated in critique groups at the wonderful Lighthouse Writers Workshop in Denver, Colorado, where I currently live. I pulled this out for two reasons. One, great way to say, this is where I worked before, and now I'm a stay-at-home mom. There were a couple samples actually that had stay-at-home mom stuff in them, and I know that that's a frequent question that comes up. How to bring up that you are a stay-at-home mom. Jenny entered Pitch Wars and got in, so it goes in the bio, but I also like this, the Lighthouse Writers Workshop in Denver, Colorado. Look for local writing resources and organizations that you can join. That's gonna be a theme in a bunch of these. Now, you don't always wanna say, I have critique partners in a bio. That's not quite relevant, but anytime you're involved in any sort of professional workshop, it can be worth putting in your bio. Next is Isabel Sterling, whose agent is Kathleen Rushell, and her debut is These Witches Don't Burn. Burning Salem is a young adult novel complete at 75,000 words. While the first in a planned trilogy, the novel can stand alone. I'm an active member of RWA and an organizer for my local critique group. So the bio paragraph is not a paragraph. It's actually one sentence. This is combining the so-called book paragraph with literally one line of bio. And I'm an active member of the RWA, which is an organization anyone can join, and an organizer for my local critique group. Short and sweet, both things that anyone can go out and do. Professional organizations are going to be a theme here. So there's the RWA, there's the SCBWI, there's the SFFA, there's one for science fiction and fantasy writers. There are lots of different things you can join. Now, you should never feel obligated to join. I'm not a part of any professional writing organization, but they can be really great ways to kind of get your feet wet into information on the industry and specific genre that you're writing. And they're always an option to join so that you have something in your bio, especially if you actively participate. Next is Tahara Mahmood Hayes, whose agent is Carrie Sutherland. I have the honor of workshopping this story in the NYT bestseller Nova Ren Suma's YA writing workshop at Jurassic Artist Residence in Woodside, California in June 2017, and the Reunion Workshop in April 2018. My non-writing life is spent as a mother of three daughters and as a surgical physician assistant. I look forward to working with you to make this story the best version it can be. So here is another writing workshop credential. There are lots of writing workshops out there. Very often you're going to apply to them. Not everyone is chosen and it's like going to a writing retreat, but there's a workshop component. You're being taught by a professional expert. So this is an example of one. I have friends who have done Nova Ren Sumo's workshop and they love it. And it's an easy way to say, hey, I take this seriously. I did this thing and a professional worked with me on my work. Next is Emily Robertson, whose agent is Carrie Sparks and her debut is Lifestyle of gods and monsters. 
I have had a story published in Pembroke Magazine and I have a BA in English from Brown University and an MA from the University of Texas at Austin. I am a member of the SCBWI, the DFW Writers Workshop, the North Carolina Writers Network, and two critique groups. Same thing here. Those are all organizations and things and opportunities that you can seek out in your local area to join to be engaged in a local writing community and that can go in your bio. And last but certainly not least is Kim Long, whose agent is Mo Ferreira. By day, I am a Chicago land litigation attorney. I am an SCBWI member and am active in the writing community, having served as an MG mentor in Brenda Drake's Pitch Wars for the last two years. Now, to close out this section, I just want to stress one last time. You do not need to join professional organizations, attend workshops, conferences, classes, etc. You never have to put out money in order to get things for your bio paragraph. This is optional, just something that you certainly can do if you're worried about not having enough or you're feeling like you're struggling to be engaged in the writing community. I never joined a single organization or paid for a single workshop, but I have people who that is the route they take and they like having that route kind of as their way in. I just offer them as examples because they are attainable credits in the sense that these are opportunities that anyone can seek out if they want to. Overall, I hope this breadth of bios gives you different ideas of different ways to frame your bio, no matter how much or how little you feel you have to put into it. It can be as simple as I live here and here's some of my hobbies, or it can be different ways of mentioning writing credits you might have, organizations you might have joined. It can be in jokes or references to the book that you're querying, why you wrote the book. There's no one right way to write a bio and you shouldn't stress out too much. Bios ultimately in a good query should be no more than 10% of your query anyway. Most of your query is about the book and you hook them with the book, not about who you are. When they get to the bio paragraph, as I mentioned, it's gravy. They're already like, this sounds like a cool book. I wonder who wrote it? And then you just give them a few short, sweet lines to give context to who you are. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom in Austin or a cat mom, or you've had some short stories published, you're part of the SCBWI, whatever it is. I hope this has helped, but as always, let me know down below in the comments questions that you have about the query bio. There's no tried and true formula and every bio is going to be a little different depending on who you are as an individual. Don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will make more practical example based videos about querying and the like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.